Hi, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll. Thank you for joining our masterclass. As you know, we are seeing a large amount of changes made to the college application process. Students are completely overwhelmed. If your student is overwhelmed, this class is for you. We are going to go over what you should be doing within your high school, who you should be communicating. We're gonna be going over what colleges are looking for and how to match yourself up to them. We also go over our financial aid and scholarship informational session, which is phenomenal and very well received by parents. And finally, that timeline, how do we keep up with those deadlines? Because if you miss a deadline, you're basically missing money. And that's what it's all about. We are definitely, definitely excited to help students. And we've seen really great results because of how we help. So welcome to the masterclass and just know that we are giving a really dynamic discount. Anybody after watching this class decides to join our ultimate programs, you will receive a $500 discount. That is what we're doing for you because we know college is expensive and we know that this is an investment, but we wanna help you out. Again, I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, let's begin. So I like to introduce myself and my story and why, why did I get so involved with this? So here I am with my kids, the last time we were able to get together, they're in their 30s. I can't believe that much time has gone by. But going to, through the college process myself and then having my children go through it, it really, really opened my eyes. And I am a trained school counselor. I am credentialed in college advising and college admissions. I am what you call an expert. And I still found that this is so ridiculously hard and confusing because so much information is hitting us. And let's face it, we are on our phones and that's where we do our research. But when you start going down a rabbit hole, instead of really understanding the strategy of how to get your student to college, but also how to pay for it, that's what you need to understand. And that's what I have uncovered. And there are secrets that I use for all my clients. And my clients, 100% of them get scholarships. And that's what we're about. We are about helping students with the process. So I am a college scholarship coach and I am certified globally. I also am a school counselor and I'm a certified life coach. So that combination plus my 20 years experience plus working with over 2000 families, I can tell you that I have refined this strategy. So here I am with my children, both of them college educated. I, here's where I graduated. My outcome for this is to help you understand the process. I want you to understand the process. Knowledge is key. This is not something you want to leave to guessing. So I want to talk to you about where I came from. I came from parents who were blue collar, hard workers, successful people. However, they, neither of them went to college, so they did not understand the process. So I myself got tripped up. I didn't know what I wanted to study. I also, my family didn't understand the financial aid process, which is a huge piece that you need to understand. And that's why we give this masterclass. I was si assigned a college advisor that really didn't, didn't know how to help me. He did not, he was not trained as most college advisors are not. And that's one of the sad truths is that you may end up with a great college advisor, but it's rare. The majority of them are there to just sign off on what they expect you to develop. So not only are you a student who just got through the whole process of getting to school, now you're expected to understand the system of college and actually graduate on time with as little debt as possible. It's challenging. And that is why our students are feeling overwhelmed. So why do we send our kids to college if we know all this, if we know that it's confusing, stressful, causes a ton of anxiety. It puts a lot of pressure on the whole family. Why are we still sending our students to college? Well, here's your answer. Job gains. Job gains by educational level. And here we have an, an example of the kids who did not go to college.
And we understand with this last recession what happens to those students. So when we went through our last recession, we found that only the only people that were getting hired were people who had at least some college credit. So even if you didn't finish, you were more likely to be hired and you were more likely to be able to move up. And unfortunately, what happened is that there were a lot of students who were left behind. And it doesn't mean that they were not students who were decent people, who were hardworking. They had a hard time finding a job. So we experienced a really large shift. Georgetown University did a complete study in 2016. And when we were in economic recovery, there was a huge divide between students or young people who had a college degree or had some college and ones that didn't. And here, out of the 11.6 million jobs created in the post-recession economy, 11.5 million went to students or people who had at least some college. So that's why we're sending our kids to college. And within this recovery, all of a sudden, all these other opportunities opened up and the workforce looked different. We're talking about blue collar jobs were just being erased. And all of a sudden, we had several different professional jobs that appeared to be growing, and this is the area that you wanna get into. So we have white collar jobs available to students who have some college. We have technical op occupations with the whole just explosion of the internet. And we also have it in the healthcare professions, a high need for people going into those fields. And so that's where people were getting some of their college credits or completing their college credits. And those were the ones that were getting hired. Well, of course, now we know we're in a crisis for blue collar jobs. So part of what we see within the economy and how it impacts our own children who are heading off to college, you might be in the bubble of when there are fewer there are fewer jobs available to professionals or you may be in a bubble when the jobs are going to only professionals so that's one of the reasons why with all the experience i've had and the and when i've seen what's happened over the years you have to tailor your strategy you have to tailor your strategy for getting your kids into college but also how to pay for it. And that's why this master class has been so popular. So first off, I always like to tell people, where do I get this stuff? Do I just make it up? Well, I can tell you a lot of stories and I do. I go over a lot of stories that I have seen. Real people, real experiences from the over 2000 families that I've worked with. But I also use data. And this data is from Georgetown concerning post-recession job gains, also findings of expectations, which is from the Gallup poll. And they do a really great study about every four years. So I'm really looking forward to this year having another study in my hands on the next subset of people, because that helps me tailor my program to help you with your college, your college needs and the anxiety and the worry that comes with applying to college in our days. So why is it painful and why is it so hard now to be able to get your kids to actually start the process? Well, it's painful because number one, we're busy and we're distracted. And that doesn't mean take away your social media from your students, because I'm going to tell you, it's one of the ways that you need to apply to college. No longer can you apply to college with just a paper application. You are literally doing everything on the internet. So don't be one of those people that thinks, well, if I just take every technology away from my student, they'll be able to focus because they won't because kids have technology in school. And we have more people who are applying to colleges. And that has been a great, that's had a great impact on students. And that in itself, means that instead of just throwing out your hat and figuring out, oh, I'll just apply to five colleges and not really think about it, that's not a strategy. A strategy has to be that you are looking at colleges that 
clearly are going to help you get to where you need to be, but you're also looking at colleges that are a good fit within the family budget. So in this masterclass, you're going to understand how the cost of college is calculated by colleges, which will help you in your search. You're going to also understand more about how financial aid works. Believe me, we can have a whole discussion on that, but this is to help you understand and get you closer to that understanding level where you can successfully look at what do we need to do to get through this process with the least amount of, with, what do we need to do to get through this process? Where do we begin? The other thing we're gonna go over is how scholarships works. I can tell you that this is the hardest thing for people to digest, that there's actually a method and that you need to follow it so you're not wasting your time, you're not wasting your students' time, and the whole anxiety level for the student goes where it needs to be because it should be a little stressful to apply for colleges, but it shouldn't be crippling. And that's what we're finding out. So I always like to tell my story is where I went wrong and where I went wrong the second time. So the first time I declined to go to college because I knew I did not know enough about the process and I was going to get myself in trouble. But here I am. I went back a second time. Only this time I was able to get through maybe a quarter of the process of understanding what would help me pay for college. And I ended up with a huge student loan. And that is not a strategy to go to college and take out as many loans as you can. That's just not a strategy. It's called debt. And we have a problem in the United States with how many people owe over $200,000 in debt. How can you start in life when you're carrying that on your back? So it's important that you know, I know what, I, what you're going through and I know your fears because I had the same fears and I ended up with large debt. So that is why I am so passionate about how to help people. And that's why we have our memberships. That's why we have our ultimate program. And we have a special offer going on. If by the time you're done with this class and you understand how to get your student ready for applying for colleges, but you still feel like you need more, you still feel like you need help with the college list, your student needs help with those essays, then you need to look at the ultimate package and take advantage of our special offer because if you sign up after watching this, then you're gonna get a $500 discount. So let's get on with what is it about financial aid and scholarships? What do you need to know? What's the strategy? So here's the biggest concerns that come across our tables. This is what I get phone calls about. This is where I get contacted through our group internet page. This is where I get stopped when I am networking, where people are so concerned about how am I gonna afford this? I had no idea that colleges cost this much. Yeah, they hear the rumor. They've heard their friends talk about they couldn't believe how much college costs. But the reality is when you start looking at those price tags, it is going to overwhelm you. So what happens? Three different things I've seen. Families completely get overwhelmed and they stop. They just don't know what else to do about it. And they fear the whole process because they know ultimately they don't know what they're doing when they're trying to help their student. They know their student doesn't know what they're doing. And the end result is a huge, huge amount of debt that's offered instead of a really good financial aid package that includes scholarships. So what else do they know? Are we eligible for financial aid? That is the key. And we offer a free tool for you to help understand if you do, because knowing is better than not knowing. And the majority of people that work with us are working class people. They, I call them in the college process, the working poor. <laughs> and even though you make a, a really good living, that you are comfortable and you envisioned within your comfortableness that you would not have to put every single solitary penny away 
for college, that you could do a portion, that's not enough. So I'm going to tell you the secret. I am going to go over what it is that you need that's beyond your smart saving for your children for college that's going to help you really, really be successful in paying for your child's college. So they also need to know is how do I apply for scholarships? I can't tell you how many students walk into my office and either they've been applying for scholarships and it has not had any fruition or they really don't understand the true process. And before you get done with this, you are actually gonna have a list of what you need, what is it that you need to be able to help your student, what they need, and we call it the scholarship portfolio. Anybody who goes through my master classes receives that. We also, as I was saying, we offer our membership. So if you want more, if you need more, please, please look at our memberships. So here's still the biggest reasons, and I wish I could say it changed, but I have been in this profession for 20 plus years, and I always have a population of students that no matter what, choose where their best friend, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, their, who their aunt went, they go to college in this willy-nilly way where they're not really understanding what they need to do to make the decision of which college to look at. So they're going to college based on someone else's strong, strong opinions on this being the college to go to. Or they do it by default. They realize, oh my goodness, this is so overwhelming. I don't know what to do, but gosh, my best friend is, is, has already applied and been accepted. What they don't know is the best friend has not received their financial aid package. And that best friend may ultimately not go to that college because of it. That's the biggest mistake that I see students still making. And let's face it, we love our friends and we want our children to be happy within their friendships, but that cannot be the reason that you choose college. Lost credits due to transfer. You know, colleges are doing a great job monopolizing the idea that, don't worry, the majority of kids are taking six years to get through a four-year degree. That is not the attitude that you want or need. And as you can see, as I mentioned, the third point that we make, graduating in four years, unless they're in a program where they're going to get a master's degree, this is not a strategy. And because it's become the norm, or it, the colleges want you to think it's the norm, that is dangerous because most professions require a master's degree. So let's get serious. Do you wanna be paying for an undergraduate program that costs you double what it should have because you're extending it to six years? Or do you want to be someone who has enough money to obtain a master's degree as well? So think about that. What student do you wanna be? So here, 34% in 2016, and I can tell you this number has climbed another 10%. I can emphatically say that the number is still climbing and we're almost at the halfway point. Just about 50% of students are not graduating on time. That is seriously impacting their ability to pay for college. Here we have tuition inflation since 1975. It has gone up 115%. It is frightening. Now we have had things go up. We've had our food and our housing and things like that. We understand, but not one of them, not one of them is close to how the college admissions costs have inflated. And I want you to know that because as you're getting into this process, you need to understand because I always have parents say, hey, I worked a summer job and I paid for my tuition. Well, that's almost impossible unless you're earning 40 to 60,000. If your student can earn 40 to 60,000 over a summer, then they can pay for their tuition. But that's not the case. And it is just frankly impossible for students to do this in that, ma in that manner, in a strategy that worked for us when we were younger. This does not work for your student now. 
Now, I know that this slide is going to be scary to people, but this slide is so key. And even though it is from the Sally May in 2018, this still holds. These are the same demographics financially. So I want you to look at this slide. I want you to find your income. And that is what I am seeing still left. So if you are a family that makes $100,000 to $150,000 a year, good for you, but you're looking at colleges that are going to cost you about $17,000, and that's above what they've received for scholarships. This is what you're getting in the mail with this financial aid package. You are, you are having an out-of-pocket need of $17,449. This is very reflective of what's happening now. So it is so important. And this is where kids can have skin in the game. Now you know the number that you need when you're looking for scholarships. So a student who's from a family that makes $100,000 to $150,000, you're looking at trying to find scholarships that are at least going to cover that $17,000 that is out of pocket. And that's, that's scary. That is a lot of money times four. Do not eliminate, though, the biggest mistake that people make. And I know there's people out there, financial advisors out there, and I know that people are, I know there are financial advisors out there who are saying the easiest way to pay for college is to get them to a community college, have them live at home, and college will be a lot less. Well, yes, yes, that is one strategy. But here at The Coaching Educator, we work as a team with the family, and we have better strategies than that. We don't limit our students. We help our students understand the strategy. We help our families work within the strategies so that they can come up with the best package. And believe me, it works. You're going to be really excited. And if you feel at any time that you have a question, please feel free. Please email me. Please, please connect with us, get a free consultation so that we can talk about this problem because this is your reality. And the great part is, is we can help. So think about top schools are changing the way they calculate and they changed several years ago and several of the Ivy League schools since 2010 have changed their policy and they are really, really wanting to attract talented students. This is all wonderful. So certain kids can get into certain colleges and they can have it basically be a free ride. But I am here to tell you that in 2010, the landscape was very different. My own daughter was able to get into one of the Ivy League schools and we feel as talented as she was, that if she was applying now to an Ivy League school with the competition out there with the thousands of applications that they get, and we are talking thousands, anywhere from 33,000 to 50,000 applicants for a thousand spots, she probably wouldn't be getting in. But that shouldn't deter you. If you're a student that actually qualifies for an Ivy League school or for a high-end prep school or for to the Naval Academy or any of the academies, then you need to go for it. But you still have to have a strategy. No longer is it that you are a smart kid in the top 5% of your class and you have strong scores. No longer are you necessarily part of the selection to be able to attend an Ivy League school. And that's what we're seeing. And that is what we're seeing. I work in an organization, I belonged, I belong to an organization and we go over our data. And what we're finding is being smart, being in the top of your class and having great scores is not enough. So hang in there though. We have strategies that are gonna help you understand, well, what do you do? How can you move forward with this knowledge? You can, and we have a solution. We also, as I've noted before, we are offering this special deal. If you want to know more, if you want more one-on-one -on -one help, 
in how to get your very bright student to an Ivy League school. What is the process? If you want more information on that, I encourage you to join one of our memberships. But if you join our ultimate package right now, you have a $500 discount because we know this is important to you and we want to help. So let's go over financial aid basics. You know, it's okay that your, your accountant, your CPA, your financial advisor said to you, you know what, you might as well not even apply for financial aid because you're, you're not going to qualify. Well, that is half right because the reality is that you can qualify for merit and if you don't fill out that financial aid paperwork, you will not get a dime. So do not limit your student's own ability to have skin in the game. So first off, what do you need to do? You need to know and determine if you qualify for financial aid. You need to understand how schools distribute it. That's the key. And when anybody working in this field, as long as I have, that is the name of the game. It's really not about getting your kid into college. It's about helping you finance it. Because who cares if you get into all 12 schools that you apply to if you can't afford to go to those schools? It doesn't matter. And your default shouldn't be that you go to the cheapest college. The default should be that you were proactive, that you are working as a team, as a family, that you are actually on the offense side of it instead of the defense side of it. Because being on the defense end, you've already lost the game. And it is, it's a game to get yourself to college. And you have to know the rules. And I'm going to go over that with you. And that's why this masterclass is so popular, because it really helps parents to understand what they need to know and what they don't know. So please hang in there. You need to determine if you qualify for merit or an athletic scholarship. We have a whole other masterclass on this. So if you are an athlete, I encourage you to go to that other class because we really dig deep and dive deep into the whole process for an athlete, which is quite different. Knowing what assets you have to work with including student assets. Many of you have been fabulous with planning your money and, and being able to have assets that will help you in your future. But the problem is some of those assets impact financial aid. We help people understand when they're in that situation. And frankly, the majority of my clients, that's what they're dealing with. That is what they're dealing with. If you fall in that middle class category, you are, and you were decent with your money, you are going to, to come to the big realization that you are going to get punished for that. So that's why we have this masterclass to help you understand the strategies that you can use short of hiding your money under your mattress, which is not a strategy. We help you understand what you need to do next and we help you be successful in educating your child. And that's really what's important to us. We also help your student get a scholarship portfolio together. And part of this masterclass, we give you our secret list of what we know works because we are all about giving away. And this is an important piece. And we want to help as many as we can because we want people to feel confident in one of the biggest goals of their lives, which most parents want to educate their children further. So there are basically three types of financial aid, and I hope you can appreciate that I add the pain chart. All of us, or many of us, have gone into the hospital, and they give us a pain chart, and they ask us to point. Well, the federal government is going to point where you land. It's not going to be your opinion. You might think that you do not have enough money to pay for a certain college, and they're going to tell you you do. And that is why I put up this pain chart, because the majority of people that I work with who are the average American who has worked hard, hard, or the international student whose family has worked hard to get their student educated, and it all falls apart 
because they end up getting partial, which could be next to nothing. And it's really, really important for you to understand what do you need to do next. So first off, every college has a history of how they distribute financial aid. But you need to know what your EFC is. What is an EFC? An EFC is the estimated family contribution that the federal government comes up with. The federal government says that you need to pay. So you are filling out the federal government forms and all of a sudden this crazy, I call them funny numbers, end up popping up. And what it is, is they're telling you that you can pay 60,000 a year times four for your student based on the information that they request from you. So they don't ask you everything. They ask you a ve very few things that create a situation where then they tell you, based on this, you can pay this amount. Well, of course, most of my clients feel overwhelmed with the amount of money that they're told that they can afford. And most of them do not have that money saved. There's just no way. And that is why it's so key to start the process knowing that number. You need to know how public, private, and elite colleges calculate because we've had kids, my own son included, went to a small private school, which was quite expensive. Ultimately, it was less expensive than if he went to his own state college. So it's important for you to know that looking at the right school who wants you, who wants your talents, who wants your creativity or your community service or your leadership, they want you a part of the community is a huge strategy. So you also need to know how to negotiate financial aid packages, including your scholarships. You have to remember that thousands of kids get accepted, but they only go to one school. So many of those acceptance letters included a scholarship. Well, if they put out 100% of these letters went out and only 14% of students are actually going to the school, now the school has a better idea of what they have for financial aid and scholarships left. It's well worth the process of appealing. So let's talk about how we help our students with the initial process. And let's talk about how we help anybody. Here's another tidbit that we give. So on our homepage, thecoachingeducator.com, and I put a screenshot up for you to see that we use a, an estimated family contribution calculator, which will give you a fabulous report before you fill out the federal paperwork so that you have an understanding. And that's where we always start people. We want people to know, but we always, when they anybody takes any of our classes, we offer this, we encourage you to, to tell your friends about it. So if you have a child in high school, get onto this calculator so that you can create a situation where you understand what the federal government says that you can pay. That is the first step that we like to take. So basically colleges, you can Google any college, they pretty much have the cost. You need to make sure when you're Googling that you're not just Googling cost of college without saying college costs, room and board, and any other fees. So then generally you'll come up with your full price of what the college will cost. And that's important to know. So you now, after filling out that report, you have an understanding of what the federal government says that you can pay. So let's look at you know the average people that are making in that category that I talked about, 100,000 and up. They're looking at having an estimated family contribution anywhere from 40,000 to 120,000. It's frightening. It's the funny number that I say. It's just so out of people's mind. They could not believe this, but it's important for you to know. So you have your cost of attendance, what they say that you, you should be able to pay yearly, 
and then the amount. So that's just a quick idea of what is gonna, you're gonna be left with. And that chart that I showed you, that's what we're seeing. So people have anywhere from 17,000 a year to 25,000 a year that they still will have to pay outside of, outside of their pocket. And while we always say most people have a couple kids, that's challenging. That's challenging. So we don't want you dipping into your retirement. We don't want you to, to take a loan off of your house. We want you to know our strategies. And that's why we have full memberships. We have partial memberships. We have created memberships in order to meet the needs of different people. And we want to be able to help you in any way we can. So please explore our memberships and join today. And again, we have that $500 discount for anybody who signs up for the ultimate package, but that's not going to last for long because our ultimate packages are our most popular package. And while we love giving these bonuses and discounts for people who watch our master classes because you're ahead of the game, we still value our product. So we only let the we only get we only give a discount a couple times a year. So take advantage of our discount. Take advantage, especially if you have a junior. So the need that they say that's left is your out of pocket and that's what you need to meet. And that's why we want you to understand how your student can put together scholarships in a way that will help meet that need. So when you're going to a private school or a school that, that requests more information from you, either from the CSS profile or their own paperwork. You're talking about an institution, and this is the federal methodology. So, so this methodology, which is called the federal methodology from the FAFSA, which is a form that they ask you to fill out if you have a student in their senior year. Now, frankly, they ask your student to fill it out, but I can tell you right now, we do not recommend that. And if you're looking for more information on how to fill this out, if you have a future senior on our YouTube channel, The Coaching Educator, you will find a, a, a very detailed informational step-by-step -step Every single page that you will see in that FAFSA, we go over it so that you have a good understanding and can fill it out yourself. But we also, as part of our ultimate packages, we help you fill that out. And I can tell you, many parents have said to me, it would have been worth just paying you for that. <laughs> so I have filled out over 2,000 with parents, and I can tell you, it is it can be a nightmare, especially if you've made an error. And that's a huge thing that a lot of people do and they don't even realize they've made an error and there's no one there to help you correct it. The only error judgment that happens is that you're missing out on a financial aid package that you would have gotten had you not done what you did. But it's confusing to figure out because you don't fill this form out so much like I do. So you also need to know you do not put your worth. When it asks you about your worth, you are in, they're not assessing the house you live in. So it's important for people to know that. And that's probably one of the biggest errors that I uncover is that people start calculating that in. So I don't care if you live in a castle, if you live in a mansion, it doesn't matter. If that is your primary home, do not include that in. You also, the FAFSA collects all this income and asset information. You need to know that the FAFSA looks at your income from two years previous. That's why it's so important. If you have a student in high school, it's well worth filling out my calculator because then you're gonna have a good understanding because sophomore year that your student is in high school, that's the year they evaluate your financials. But, the day you fill that FAFSA out is the day they're looking at your assets from that moment. And that's why it's key to have that report beforehand so that we can create a situation where you're looking at your assets and you're using every single possible strategy that will help you to lower the cost of college for you. So institutional methodologies are for a lot of schools who have a lot of money to give, 
They may be more expensive, but they have larger endowments. And they ask you to fill out something that's called the CSS profile. And within this profile, they ask you a few more questions. And they also look at your home. And if you have a family farm, they look at assets of your student and your student's siblings as well. So basically what I say is it's a FAFSA on steroids. And the big, a big mistake that some people have made is they think they just fill out that. Well, no, you fill out both. Now, most colleges, you fill out the CSS profile who ask for it once. FAFSA, every single year your student is in college. Please do not forget that. They will not release financial aid unless you do fill that out every year. So when you get your financial aid package, which is very, very different from your admissions letter, which generally will say, hey, you qualify for the presidential or the deans or the trustee or the this or that or wooey or, <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of scholarships that you're reminded that you qualify for. And it's one of the strategies that colleges use. It's not necessarily a bad strategy, but hey, you qualify for this based on your scores, your grades and you as a student. The problem is that's not what you should be using to decide which college you go to. You need to wait for that financial aid offer, which comes from the financial aid office, which generally doesn't come till after January. So on these financial aid packages, there's, there's offers such as loans. And many times, if you really scrutinize these, you're gonna see that the majority of the money is in loans. So there are a couple kinds of loans. There's the Stafford loan, which has the unsubsidized and the subsidized loans. Subsidized loans are loans that you do not have to pay interest while you're in college. Unsubsidized loans are the opposite. You have to pay interest and it accrues. So some people use the strategy of paying the interest off while they're in college. It's, you know, it comes out to be about a hundred bucks a year. And they take care of that so their loan, their loan doesn't grow any bigger. But you need to know that a student loan actually isn't a bad thing. It's one of the lower interests that you can get on a loan. And it's one of the ways that people end up earning as they're paying it off. They, they actually establish credit. It doesn't mean that you have to take out a student loan every year. But if you need to establish credit, which most students need to eventually, it's a great way to do it. So we offer a lot of really good strategies like that and good recommendations like that. But if you want to know more about some of our recommendations that really assist students getting out of debt and not accruing a lot of debt, please join our memberships. We give a lot of information. And if you want to just try out our lowest membership to get to know us, please feel free to do that. We love our silver members. So a Perkins loan operates very similarly to a Stafford loan. And many colleges offer this kind of loan. And it's similar. It, it has a lower interest rate. And um, it depending upon your complete financial aid package and whether or not your student has received quite a few scholarships, you know, I just caution you, just because you have been offered all these loans does not mean that you should take it. What we, we recommend is wait till you get all of your financial aid letters and compare them and see which one is most cost effective. And if there is a huge difference between one college and another, revisit and see maybe the college that's offering you more money, free money, that's the one that you should potentially consider. So a non-federal loan or an alter alternative loan used to be handled under Fannie Mae. Well, no longer. No longer is that. Now we are seeing that you can go to your local bank and your local bank may have a better loan. So you are able now. Previously, you were not. So now you're able to search out potentially a reasonable loan, and you might want to do that as part of your exploration. Parent PLUS loans, I do not like. I don't feel that you have established a good college list if you are creating a situation where every single year that your child is in college, you're taking out a Parent PLUS loan. It has 
an interest rate that may be lower. You might be able to find a personal loan that's much lower, but parent plus loans oftentimes have to be paid as the student is going to school. It does not operate like a student loan and you're the one responsible. And many people say, well, I know my, my student will pay me back eventually. Well, oftentimes that's hard when they're out hunting for houses and looking for a job. When they're trying to establish themselves, it may be very hard for them to add on another burden. So I really caution you with Parent PLUS loans. So here you have a financial timeline. This is a really good thing to pay attention to. Although the FAFSA and the CSS profile both open up October 1st, please don't buy into the myth that you have to fill this out immediately because you don't. You need to fill it out before the priority deadline of the particular colleges that you're applying to. And I still see that most of them are well after January, unless you're applying early decision or early action. You may have a deadline that's possibly December 15th, but very rarely do I ever see a deadline that for a regular admissions or even an admissions that's priority very rarely do I see a priority deadline. So take the time. What we do with our, within our memberships is we help parents understand the best time for them to be filling out this form with their student. Because sometimes there are some really great strategies that you can utilize that will help you, that can move your assets in a way that's number one legal, that's not just shoving money under the mattress, like I said, but it's actually legal, uh, legal strategies that will help with your student having the least amount of debt. And that's what we're all about. We are all about getting students through school, not just into college. We help from application to graduation. And that's why we have our memberships because it is a huge process. So again, I would encourage you to look at our memberships and see if any one of them fit for you. So one of the things that comes back, which looks so confusing, is what's called a SAR, Student Aid Report. It is not coming to your home. It is coming through emails. So one of the things we go over in our College App Boot Camp is strategies on how to deal with this. But this is a form that comes back that basically shows you how you filled out your FAFSA. And it's the time to really look at it and see if there's anything you need to change, if there has been any changes since the day you filled it out. And sometimes there are. So it's important for you to pay attention to that and to address it according to what the, how the college wants you to address it. You also have institutional forms from some college, which some colleges which are scholarships beyond what they give you when you first apply. So it's really important to make sure that the colleges that you are looking at and the list of colleges that you actually identify if there's more work that you need to you need to complete in order to get the full financial aid package that you deserve. Verifications forms. Though parents feel like this is just one more form gathering more information and really kind of questioning if they were being honest on their FAFSA, that's actually not it. Colleges are assessed. They have to prove through a verification form that they are distributing financial aid appropriately. And that is why it's random, but at least one in a hundred students will get a verification form. So you have to pay attention to this and you have to make sure that you fill this out and get it in or your financial aid package will be held up. That means scholarships. That means any opportunity that you have to take advantage of being any opportunity that you have that is going to give you more money appeals. Now, we recommend that you appeal right around the end of April because most colleges really have a strong list of who's coming and who's not. 
And generally, there's more of an opportunity, but you need to follow the directions of the college, and every college has a different way of doing it. So it's important for you to look at, do they want your student to fill out a form? Do they want you to fill out a form as a parent? Do they want both of you? Whatever they need, you need to give it, and you need to get it in, or you won't get more money. And colleges really are interested in getting talented and, and smart students to their community, so it's important for you to understand for them, they are usually willing to give more money. So here we have the saddest, saddest slide in this presentation, and that is that still people, no matter how I say it, they will not fill out the BAFSA. So therefore, you will not get any scholarships, whether it's an athletic, whether it's ROTC, whether it is merit, whether it is leadership, whether it's for community service, you will not receive the scholarship. They cannot release it to you unless this form is filled out. So it's important to know it's confusing. And again, we have a whole long presentation on how to fill that baby out. It's important for you to take advantage of it. Go to our YouTube channel and just subscribe, share it with your friends, because I go over all the gory details about the FAFSA, how to fill it out, and you can do it from the privacy of your home. So this is the big, big benefit of watching our master class. Here's where we show you how to help your student approach scholarships, because you cannot just start approaching scholarships without having this under your belt because you're going to waste a lot of time, you're going to get frustrated, and you aren't going to get any money. So if you want to get money, if you want your student to not waste their time, if you want to not argue with your student about applying for scholarships, which is all the stuff that we've heard from families, then it's important for you to pay attention. So where do I begin with scholarships? Can I get sports scholarships? Can I, do I have to write an essay? Can I get a scholarship if I'm in the top 10% of your class? Can I easily get a scholarship if I have excellent grades? And can I get a scholarship while I'm in college? So yes, 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 yes to all of these. But you can't if you don't get the scholarship in. And you can't if you're applying to the wrong scholarship or you don't understand how your college distributes financial aid because there are some scholarships that if you get an outside scholarship and they've offered you a scholarship, they will literally pull the same amount that you got for that scholarship. So let me say that again. Your student may have earned a $10,000 scholarship, outside scholarship from your community. And when they have the scholarship sent to the college, the college will rescind $10,000, dollar for dollar, because they don't calculate financial aid like that. So you better understand the process. And if you need to understand the process and you're not sure how that works, it's super important. By junior year, you're, you join our membership so that you have an understanding of what you need to be doing and how that looks and which colleges actually fund and let you have your outside scholarships. Great strategy, it's something I used with my daughter and she ended up not paying a dime for her undergraduate. So if you wanna learn more about how to do that, it is really important. Our ultimate packages are based on my experience with my children, getting them through college and then working in a school system for several years. I worked over 10 years in public school. I know how the college process works and I know how to help people. So what is a scholarship? It's the free stuff. It's the free stuff. And many students get a financial aid package and they think they get, and that is just not the case. And frankly, the way many of them come to you, it appears like it is free. So it's important for you to dissect these letters. We go over them. We see thousands of offers. We know, we know exactly what you're getting and we can help you dissect that. And that's an important key. 
So many of the, the scholarships are all about your academic major, your grades, your test scores, your GPA. So there is something that's called a grid scholarship. So you apply to a college and they give you money automatically. They say, hey, based on what you received for a GPA, your class rank and your scores, this is the amount of money. So here's a little secret. Even if colleges say, don't worry, we really don't look at scores, their financial aid office does. So it's the difference between getting a $2,000 automatic scholarship and a 12,000. So don't kid yourself. And that's what we go over. We help students prep for their tests. We help students understand how important that score is and what their transcript needs to look like. It's important. Don't kid yourself. Money is tied to scores, GPA, and your rigor of your transcript. We use a lot of different strategies because we work with a lot of different kids. We don't just work with top of the class kids. I was not in the top of my class and I have two very different students. So I understand as a parent what it feels like and I want the best for both of my children. And so therefore there is a strategy and that is what we figured out when we implement this in the coaching educator and we develop this program based on that. We develop this program with our hearts. We want to get their kids to college in a reasonable way, but they want to educate all their kids. They don't want to just educate one. They want to educate all their kids and they want to be able to not impact their retirement and not impact their, their family home. So, other scholarships come through athletic abilities, and you need to, if you're an athlete, watch our masterclass for athletics, and we do a free masterclass for that as well, and it's a whole different strategy, and you need to know it, and frankly, I love it when eighth and ninth graders are watching this with their parent. Religious affiliation, first-generation student, these are all things that free money comes with. So another example that many scholarships are awarded to students who have a strong community service. They have club affiliations. They have siblings going to the same school. They may, their parents may be part of a union. Uh, your employment, your parents or grandparents where they work may offer scholarships. Career goals, also ethnicity and military. So it's important for you to know that there, there is scholarship money but not everybody is going to apply to it. So when you have all these different programs that are saying, hey, fast money, college board, we've got all these scholarships to look up, they do. But just you need to know that the majority of students don't qualify for them. So do you want your student wasting 20 hours filling out form after form after form for scholarships that they don't qualify for? Or do you want a strategy? So why do you need a portfolio? Well, part of it is their memory's not that good. And I have sat with kids, oh no, I haven't done any community service or I've only done this. Well, when we sit down and dissect what they've done, they've done a lot. And it's really important for you to be able to backtrack and get all that information if you didn't keep track of it as you go. Your parent's memory is not that good. I mean, truthfully, it's like the baby book thing. You know, we all want to do a fabulous baby book for every single child. Well, parents usually figure out by the last child, they, uh, I, when I look at my baby book, my mother literally had what was sent home, what she was, should feed, my twin brother and I. And that was it in the day we were born. <laughs> so... Parents, I understand you're busy, and I understand that putting together portfolios with your students and helping them recognize all the great things that they've done or help push them into a direction where they actually are developing themselves and developing this great portfolio takes time. And that's why our memberships help students to do that. And this is a huge piece that the student can take control of and it's great and it's good for them it's good for them they feel good about themselves and they start recognizing that oh I actually am a competitive applicant 
And really, that's what it's all about, is keeping your student feeling good about themselves through this very stressful process. So many department scholarships require documentation for community service. So it's important that if you build this portfolio, that you continue to build it while you're in college. Our goal is to help students in high school understand what they need in this portfolio and to actually continue to do it in college and keep applying to scholarships because many colleges have great scholarships at a much larger level from for their junior and senior year. So it's important. What makes a good portfolio? So here's the slide. This is the magic. This is our secret weapon, secret sauce. Call it what you want, but this is what works for kids. And that's all we care about. You call it whatever you want. We call it our scholarship portfolio. And here's what you need. You need your course plan for high school and college. It's super important for you to have this plan down. Most schools require it, but if you're a homeschooled student, it's important for you to do this. You need to lay out your goals. And part of that, and believe me, it can be a flexible plan. Part of that is developing a goal that's towards the end of high school. And we ask you to do this because there are many scholarships that actually only require a plan. You need your resume, including awards, and frankly, you need a couple of resumes if you're a musician or an athlete. And we go over that in our athletic and our theater arts. We have two other master classes that we offer. So if you are in drama, theater, music, or art, you want to watch that one. If you are an athlete, you want to watch those. Those are the two that go really deep on what you need to be doing. You also need your transcripts, and the transcript needs to be a transcript that's reflective of what's going on in the moment. No one wants to look at a ninth grade transcript. We want a transcript for every semester that you've completed in high school. So always have your most up-to-date transcript. You want your scores from standardized tests. Print them out and put it in. But also, while you're doing this, we live in a digital world, and I love everybody to keep a digital folder with this information in it, but I also want them to have a physical one next to them because it's certainly easier to fill out a form if you have a physical notebook. So we are big fans of three ring binders and frankly, many students drop their phone in their toilets, but no one drops their three ring binder. So you actually have a hard copy of what you need. Make sure when you make your digital that you keep it on your desktop, but also put it in your drive so you're not going to lose it in case you, you're, you have a crash or your information is lost somehow. It's important to have it in a couple different places, but also important to keep everything updated. You want your references. You need to keep a list of references. And now, depending upon the scholarship that you're applying to, at least keep a list of first and last name, Telephone number and email. So when you do a project of any kind, if you've worked anywhere, it's important because it doesn't fly if you say, well, I know the person's first name was Amy, but I don't know any other information. And Amy may have moved on to a different project. She may work somewhere else. But most people are really, really thrilled to fill out a quick request for, for a reference that applications ask for. You need to keep track of your admissions acceptance letters because believe it or not, some scholarships want proof. They want proof that you have received at least one admissions letter. It doesn't mean that you're attending that particular school, but they want to see this, so please save them. You would be surprised at how many people don't. It's important. It's important to do. So scholarships identified and scholarships applied to. So this is important for you to keep track of these things and the deadlines and what they require because the larger the scholarship, the more work. And instead of just one reference, they may want three. And they may want a reference from someone who actually witnessed you performing this or doing that. And it's, it's really important for you to know. You also need to know your EFC from your FAFSA. So at this point, you hopefully have gone and used that tool and have an understanding of what your EFC is. But when you are a senior and you fill out the FAFSA with your parents, you then will get a, a 
the last page will be a form that basically states your EFC. This is important because this verifies whether you qualify for a lot or you don't. And some scholarships are awarding to students who don't qualify for a lot of free stuff, and others want you to demonstrate need. And I can tell you that a lot of students fill out tons of, a of scholarship applications, but they miss the fine print that they say will go to a person in need. And the majority of students that I work with middle-class families, and I do work with many pro bono students as well, but you would be shocked at how many people don't qualify for any free money. So it's important. Go to thecoachingeducator.com, find our EFC, fill it out, get your printed out form so you have an understanding before you fill out that FAFSA. So again, here are examples, because people, you know, I can talk the talk, but here's where I walk the walk. These are true students. These are my students. And these are students that I helped them understand their greatest strengths and what they could utilize as a community service project. So here's two young students who needed to do a National Honor Society leadership project. And every single person at this particular school needed to do that who belonged to the National Honor Society. And these are students who wanted to go to a business school. So let's not just do a project to get it done with. Let's do a project that's actually going to count. So these two students taught at the Community Ed a financial literacy course, and it was so well received, and I strongly believe it helped them get into the colleges with dynamite scholarships that they were looking at, and they were looking at competitive colleges. Here's another example I had. This is a scholarship that was at a particular college that paid for everything. The only obligation is that you needed to be trained in their leadership program and you needed to commit to that, which meant you went to college two weeks before everybody else, and every year you stayed two weeks over the summer to continue with this leadership development. You basically are being developed as a leader, have opportunities while you're at the college to expand on your leadership expertise, and frankly, many students who win these scholarships, which are large scholarships, end up getting hired above someone else. Because not only do they do well in school, they also do well because they are debt free. They don't have to worry about paying any money towards their college education. They can focus on developing skills and keeping their grades up. What a relief that is. So here I have a student. This was the first sentence of his one of the many essays that were required. So when Parents ask me, well, how many essays are they going to have to write? Well, if you want to qualify for those really good scholarships, you are looking at about 30 to 35 essays that you'll be writing. So here's a student that successfully applied to a leadership scholarship that was a full ride. And here's his first sentence. I'm the seventh child of a large family, and by the fourth child, things kind of run out with regards to originality. And again, it was an excellent essay. He worked very hard to do this. He worked very hard. There were five total essays due with this. And he met the deadline, and he was offered the scholarship. Best kept secret, ROTC. Here's a young lady, got into the college she wanted to. Here's her friend next to her, who she happened to meet while she went into ROTC. Adamant she didn't want to do ROTC till she got into that college and saw the price tag. Very little was given to her. She had very strong grades, but that ROTC scholarship took care of the rest of it. So it was a fabulous opportunity. She's graduating this year from college. She is actually the top ROTC cadet in her unit. She has national recognition because she competed nationally, and ROTC has offered her such a wide berth of opportunities. She can't wait to graduate and take advantage of them. We have another student, very strong, actually top of her class, graduated valedictorian, but she wanted to get into an Ivy League school. She wanted to get into the academies, and she did. But that took 
a lot and it required her rethinking her talents and actually utilizing her talents, especially in her junior and senior year, to create a situation where people could actually see that she was part of her community, a strong part. It's not just about grades. It's not just about your ACT or SAT score. Her scores were strong, but she needed them stronger because she was competing against everybody in the United States. I mean, they get 9,700 applications to the Air Force Academy, and they only accept 12% of them. So you really have to stand out, and that's part of our ultimate program as we work on your SAT and ACT prep. We utilize a program that has successfully raised scores, and we're so proud of it, and kids love it, and that's what we care about. You can also, as a strategy, enter any of the, the armed forces, and you can go to school later. Here is a picture of my son, and he ended up, after two years of college, going into the Navy, and he ended up having plenty of money with the GI Bill to return to college, finish his degree, and still have money to spare. So the great part is, is he can utilize his GI Bill money for his wife, or his kids. So this is important because he certainly hasn't even come close to using it up. It's a strategy. He was considering changing what he was studying. It ended up that he studied the same thing after he got in the Navy, but it was a great opportunity without missing a beat for him to be able to pay for his college and have minimum debt. Religious affiliation and leadership. Here's a young man, an engineer, who was able to qualify for a leadership scholarship that paid for a significant amount of his tuition. It basically paid for 80% of what it cost for him to go to a very, very expensive private school. He ended up at Gonzaga, and this helped fund him. Here's a different strategy. We have a young man who is going into an educational field. It's important to be strategic and be strategic in the way that's gonna be most beneficial. For him, taking every single opportunity for dual enrollment, AP classes, created a situation that when he entering college, he hit the ground running. So he graduated in three years with a double major and a minor, and he was offered a paid internship, which is virtually unheard of in the teaching profession. He definitely scored. He definitely was able to pay for college. And really, he his third year was fully funded. But he also was awarded many scholarships for his first and second year. His parents were thrilled. They are a double income family with one child. So you can only imagine they, they, their estimated family contribution number was so ridiculous, but they were able to educate their child and create a situation where the money that they had saved for him to use for his undergraduate can now be used for his master's without a hiccup. How great is that? So athletics, and as I've mentioned before, we go into an intense program with our athletes because it is a whole different strategy. But here is an example of one of our athletes that not only because of his really great transcript scores, and he worked hard to improve that score, created a situation where he received a ton of money, and then he could pay for his athletics on top of it. So we're looking at this family thinking that they were going to be spending thousands of dollars after all the thousands of dollars you spend on athletics for your student in high school, when in fact their initial cost for him to go to college, and it has stayed the same every, all four years, has been $5,000 a year. That's a deal. The place to find the best scholarships are going to be attached to your schools. So it's important that you really understand that FAFSA, what your estimated financial contribution is supposed to be, what the government says you can pay, and that should be part of that list making. But apart from that, you actually can find scholarships. It's, 
It's cumbersome. Um, you can find them online, FastWeb, College Board. You literally can Google scholarships for college. And you will have all these portals that you can go into, make accounts, and actually start looking based on your scenario. So if I am a male, if, I, um, if I'm considered not in need, um, if I do outdoor sports, um, you know, it takes some time, but don't, you know, that is a reality. But this is where I recommend you not spend a ton of time unless you find out that you're someone who qualifies for need. And there are various circumstances that help you to do that, especially people who have self-employed parents or have lost one of their parents or their parents have gone through a divorce or their one of their parents lost their job so there are circumstances that will that qualify you for financial need and it's important to take advantage of them so these are then the scholarships that oftentimes do help but again as you learned each college does their financial calculations differently so while you're looking for outside scholarships make sure you know how each college hands out their financial aid because it'd be a shame to actually look up, get scholarships, earn them, get awarded, pick a school that pulls the amount that they said they were going to give you because you showed up with a $15,000 in outside scholarships. So here is an example. I have this page up, Fast Web, College Board, your local business and organizations. If your parents or grandparents belong to Elks or Knights of Columbus or any of those outside external clubs for adults or, or associations, they, need, they should be checking to see if there is any opportunity, especially in an in the employment world. You know, I have actually had parents who work for companies where I've said, if you don't have a scholarship going, go to HR and see if you can. And even if they can start a scholarship, maybe that gives $100 to every employee's students, that can, that's helpful for books. So don't be afraid to ask your own employer. There are several employers that have different discounts and deals and um, depending upon what you want to do. I actually have a student who is working for a company who he can go to school online and they will fund it completely. So, you know, you never know and that may be a perfect opportunity for many people. So again, here's the list and every single state ends up putting and listing scholarships that that particular student from that state attending a state school will qualify for. So if you're from Texas, actually Texas has a great system, um, and you go to a Texas school, they have some very, very good scholarships. If you're in Idaho, they try to provide some scholarships. They're working on several different initiatives. So it's worth taking a look, but again, please focus on getting that school list that's appropriate, that's based on your financial aid. So when do you look? You really should start looking in high school because if you can have it lined up, it doesn't mean that you're applying. However, there are several scholarships that you can get um, that are, especially for sophomore year, that are associated with colleges. For example, RPI gives what they call a book award. They give you a medal and it's actually a scholarship that if you in two years commit to their college, they honor that scholarship and that is due your sophomore year. So you definitely don't want to be applying um, and behind the eight ball in the spring of your senior year. There are very few scholarships available unless they're, they're, they have the deadline for that um, specific. But most of the colleges, their deadlines are before Christmas. So it's important for you to absolutely be looking between the summer, between junior and senior year, you want to continue to do throughout college. So it's important that many, many colleges, especially department scholarships, are readily available to juniors in college and seniors in college. So that means that summer before your junior year, you're really gonna be wanting to identify and look and see if you qualify. 
graduate school, many scholarships are after you've completed at least a semester or at least your first year, and then they provide some. Some automatically, I mean, geosciences right now are getting funded like crazy. Unfortunately, the field that I'm in, very little funding. So <laughs> if you're in the counseling umbrella, um, they, there doesn't seem to be a lot of a, a lot of money, but there is still some strategies that you can utilize, and we do that with our graduate programs, which I'm not going to discuss um, here. But if you are in graduate school and you want to um, consider your options, please feel free to sign up for a free consultation. So scholarships absolutely will not come to you. And probably the biggest error I see is Senior year, I have a lot of seniors start trickling in who potentially could have joined the membership sooner or joined our ultimate programs. And they, of course, because of the stress and everything else, just kind of become paralyzed. And then they trickle in, and there's really not a lot they can do. And it's, it's a sad situation because many of them are strong students. So what I want you to know is try to help your student to get past that paralysis and that overwhelmed feeling. Certainly consider signing up for a free consultation. Certainly consider signing up for our lowest membership silver so you understand at least the timeline so you can assist your student. It's so important. And students, I'm going to tell you, it is a huge process. It's going to be one of the largest things you do. And just like when you started driving, it is really important to reach out to your parents or your guardians, anybody who's in your life that actually can uh, just support you in this journey. It's a fabulous journey, it's an exciting journey, but only if you don't feel so overwhelmed. So no one should charge you to qualify for scholarships. Anybody who stay, and I've seen these letters, my students bring me these letters, I always like to see what's out there. And that is absolutely a scam. If anybody works with you professionally, helping you with scholarships, there is a process that is you are supposed to be following. You assist with essays. You might assist with helping identify. But you certainly do not in any way create a, some sort of scammy letter that says, we'll qualify you. That immediately tells you that, it's, that this is not where you want to be. No one should guarantee anything. We are in a business that you can I can't guarantee. I would never guarantee because life happens and you never know. And I've seen kids get accepted to fabulous programs over the years that I've worked with kids, and I've seen them blow it in their second half of their senior year. I've seen students lose their admissions because of an error they made in judgment. I've seen them lose their scholarships because their GPA went lower and their commitment as a student when they received the scholarship was that they were to maintain a certain grade point average. So I have seen it all and I'm telling you part of the part of how you can support your student is to help them finish out their senior year really really well. So financial aid is another option. It's just, again, use that estimator found on our homepage, that pig with the money symbol. And if you're still feeling overwhelmed and you don't know what to do with that report, please sign up for a free consultation. So why do we start so early? And, and this is important to know. So my own experience with developing freshman academies and developing programs and my scholarship portfolio that has been actually phenomenal for students and helping them feel good about themselves but also qualify getting them to qualify for certain scholarships that they wouldn't previously have done and so when I mean qualification that means that they can apply to these because they actually have everything that this scholarship takes other than writing their essays and you know competing with the, the rest of the United States. So I like to put up, this is a very old um, 2010. This is all online now, but I, I printed this out because this is, and I scanned it so you could see, this is what the one of the larger scholarships is. So if you look at one of those larger scholarships like a AXA Achievement, or if you look at a scholarship like the Coca-Cola scholarship, the larger scholarships definitely have different requirements. 
So it's like for here, you need to actually respond to all five of these questions. This particular scholarship requires written references from people who have actually participated or observed you in this particular um, community service project that you've talked that you are stating you did in order to earn this scholarship. So I just want you to know that, you know, this young man pictured, uh, and I have it labeled obscure scholarships. Well, he actually went for the AXA Achievement Scholarship, and he got in the last round, which is very impressive. He did a really, really profound community service that he had started in eighth grade. So that is fabulous, but I also wanted to talk about obscure scholarships. So this young man is six, eight and a half. <laughs> so of course we, <laughs> we went after the tall scholarships. So you would not, you'd be very surprised at, um, that there are these scholarships. So if you're a twin, if you're going to the same school, if you have a unique characteristic, you can actually apply to obscure scholarships too. And if you can get 500 to 1,000 from them, that's great, and, and it's actually comical to do it. So of course he applied for the tall scholarships, and I had to actually verify that he was six, eight and a half. So one of the ways we did is this particular picture, because he volunteered at the local radio station, was next to one of the staff members who was five feet. So it was really quite impressive. All right, so here we go. So why do we keep a calendar? Why do we stay organized? It's important for you to record your deadlines. You will not believe how many, if you treat this right, if you do it like a job and you really need to, you need to carve out at least three to six hours when you start getting onto these scholarships. It really does take that amount of time and concentration. You do wanna use your social networking tools, use it positively. I really encourage kids, if they're looking at certain schools, then get onto their Instagram, get onto their Facebook. Even if you open up a Facebook just for the, the sake of you recording your community service, that's a really powerful thing to do. You don't have to be on it to have all, uh, you know, obviously Facebook is really outdated for students, but it's not outdated for colleges. So be wise. Remember that any picture you put up stays up on the internet. It's very important that you are considerate to your friends and that you're considerate, you're making sure your friends are considerate to you. You want to also calculate your time on a monthly basis. Many scholarships request and want incorporated into your the application how many hours you spent and of course recycle your material if if seven of your 30 essays required a leadership essay some of them will say 100 characters some of them will say 150 characters some will say 500 words you can play off of that same same essay and it's important for you to you know, use it as a strategic technique. So again, why? Why am I having this conversation with you? I'm having this conversation with you because I don't want you to end up with over $100,000 in debt that was unnecessary. It happened to me. That's why I am so passionate, and that's why I developed freshman academies when I worked for public schools. I have a national award for that program and a lot of that program I utilize in my own individualized school counseling program and every single one of our team members are very very aware that our main goal is to create a situation where students are not feeling as overwhelmed where they really understand financial aid and scholarships and how it works and that we really are meeting the needs of the parents as well so check out our memberships and and understand that we are here for parents we are here for students we appreciate the business and thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the master class. Why do I give a free master class? I give a free master class because I want you to be aware of the data. And the data is that if you only have a high school diploma, you are going to struggle getting a job. So when I talk about having you get an education, it can be anything from a trade, which financial aid is included. It can be a four-year degree. It can be a two-year degree. 
it is important for you to just be thinking for your future and your education. And I want to absolutely create a situation where families are not feeling so overwhelmed. That is super important to me. So I'm revisiting that slide of 99% in the last recession. 99% of people who went beyond high school ended up being hired, whereas that 1% who only had a high school diploma had limited options. So please take my advice. If you have any questions about what we go over in the master class, please reach out. If you want your student to become more confident, like Grace, who's a current student, then sign up now, take advantage of this special deal, and we're not gonna have this forever. This is just a very limited deal where we're taking 500 off for anybody who's watched this program, who's watched our master class, and who wants to sign up. So thank you so much. I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, founding member of The Coaching Educator.